Hello and how are you? Welcome to our ninth video, if not the eighth, uh, of learning how to make uh, web dashboards using uh, Laravel Admin. In the previous video, we stopped at this point where we looked at a lot of things that we could do with uh, Laravel Admin uh, uh, basic usage of uh, the grid. So we're going to do, we're going to take it from there and uh, proceed. So without wasting much time, let's go straight into business. So we looked up to the progress bar. We looked at, uh, I think this is where we were, the loading status. Uh, uh, in the value of one, two, three, it will be displayed as loading icon. So this is the loading status. Uh, and uh, it will be loading in the form of these uh, icons, in some of these values until it is complete. All right, uh, you can implement those uh, few things that I gave you as assignment. And uh, so you can also get your brains uh, thinking. So I'm not uh, really spoon food you, spoon feed you and uh, teach you everything. So you need to also try to uh, find some things uh, by yourself. So these remaining ones, you can uh, try them by yourself and see how you uh, make use of them. So today we are going to go to the next module, which is the filter. And we're going to see how we can make use of a filter in Laravel admin. So I think this one we're going to use, um, we are going to create another controller. And uh, we use it for demonstration. You know, I think the controller which has enough data is the control of what? Of buildings. So let's use the control of buildings to create another controller. I mean, let's use the model of building to create another controller that we're going to use to demonstrate the filter feature of Laravel admin. So, because this one at least has some enough uh, data. So, all right, let's go ahead and do that. So, I'll just simply come to my um, uh, project and then go to important commands where I always put my important commands. And then we're going to create another uh, model called uh, filter. So I'll just simply come here, another controller called filter, and then I'll just simply come here and say filter controller and the model that you're going to use, you're going to use the building, what? The building model. So after doing that, uh, the next thing that we're going to do is, uh, is do what? Is uh, to copy this terminal, I mean this command, and then paste in terminal and uh, run it. So you can have that controller. So I'll run it and then it will execute and uh, we wait as it executes. So when it finishes, we'll be having another controller in place. So I'll copy this uh, line of controller, then come to the routes, admin app routes here, and then add this controller there. And then you see it is then having the name buildings, but for us you can put here maybe uh, the name filters. Okay, so it can be different. The endpoint can be different. So after doing that, now we're going to go straight to our project and uh, add it on the what? On the menu. So to add it on the menu, we'll come at the project and then come here to admin, then menu. And then after, uh, we're going to add under what? Under grid. Under grid, we are going to add filters and then can maybe such a relevant icon and then put it there as what as filters and then save. So if we refresh now, uh oh, I forgot to write the word filter properly. I just wrote F, oh my god. Okay, I'm going to rename it. And then uh, let me also put it under what? And uh, under this grid here. And then save. So now if you refresh, we should be able to see that filter on our what? On our menu. So with that much said, uh, let's go straight into now. You should be able to see it here. Yeah. So let's go straight into the demonstration. So the first thing is uh, that we're going to look at is the 
filter itself how do you add there the filter okay so to add the filter you just simply uh, touch on the grid you put the method of filter and then you put the callback function that you want to receive and then like this you can filter this is a simple filter that you can do what that you can implement so let's go ahead and do this so we'll just simply come to our project and then you come this controller that we've just created this one and then go to the grid which is this one and to implement filter you just simply get the grid and then say uh, fi filter and then you open bracket and put a callback of uh, function filter like this okay function filter and then like that so if you do like this we'll be able to do what to receive a filter I mean to modify a filter so if i come here and refresh I should be able to see our filter there so now for example if you need to disable this filter by id if you need to disable the filter by id you just simply come here inside this model and then put uh disable disable id filter disable id filter like this so if you do that and you come and refresh let us be using uh, this refreshing it makes it much more faster so if you refresh you see now if i try to filter here i won't be able to see the what i won't be able to see filter by id in fact there's nothing there okay so now how can you filter for example uh you want to search or you want to give the ability to filter by maybe the room name so to do that you just simply come and put a filter like this and then say uh, uh, like so like means that will be filtering uh, by the by the what by the like for example if uh, someone types in something that is like is that name i mean or something that is like in the column of name you'll be able to do what you'll be able to receive those such results so uh this represents a column this represents a label that will appear on the filter menu on the filter form so if i come here and refresh i should be able to filter can you see so if i come and say maybe uh nyerere house like this and i search you'll be able to see all the rooms that have the name uh nyerere house okay so that is how implement the filters so now let us dive, dive deep into that. So if you want your filter to be expanded by default, for example, if there is nothing there in the filter, for example, if it reset and it's not expand, it will be automatically be collapsed. But if you want it to be expanded by default, you'll have to call this method on the filter. Uh, filter, expand. I mean, grid expand filter. So by doing like this, it will do what? It will be able to your filters by default even before you do what before even before a user clicks on it so you see if i refresh there i'll be able to see my filter while it's already opened okay so it will be up to you how you want it to be like so all manipulate manipulate filter instance by using the what uh the callback of filter so for example if you want to manipulate uh, the filter itself while it is already there you can uh, call back this one you can use this one to expand to see if it has been filtered or to, en to enable the filter using this one so we can proceed so now the next thing is uh, uh for example defining the scope or something that you want to filter in okay so you can define your most commonly used query as a query of scope as query scope which will appear in drop down menu on the filter button for example like this if you want someone to be able to filter by 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 what by 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 by, by the name uh, for example want someone to i mean for example you want someone to filter to, to to sort uh the, 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 the specific filter, for example, to, 
here someone if you want to say for example you want to see the recently things the uploaded things you can as well uh, do like this for example just simply say scope and then you implement the scope as you want for example you see here the scope is uh, uh, for example for male and uh, and uh, it is being represented male so you can say where uh, and then you put the gender and then you put the uh, the field that you want to, want to represent uh, so that's how you can use what you can use scope for example here you can also be able to limit like if someone is uh, searching from the address you can be able to limit what limit the address from uh, from what from this uh, scope way so if you say that if someone try to say I want to, to search new things uh, you can say scope where someone clicks on the new uh, you'll be able to do what to sort I mean where the ID is greater than a specific uh, date that you want that you can specify here so let me show you here what I'm talking about uh, if I come here inside this filter so if I want to filter by scope, uh, so I can just simply come there and uh, do what and uh, modify there and refresh. So, so here we'll have this uh, kind of wave drop down, okay? So, this is what we call a what? A scope. So, if someone clicks here, automatically the filter that we have, that we have here, or the, the condition that we have here, is the one that will be implemented. So, if I come here and I say filter by recently modified, so it will have to get for me things that were added today. Okay? So, for example, I can say uh, things that are recently modified are things that uh, whose date is greater than uh, a specific date so you have to put there where the created is maybe comma and then you put the greater than and then you put the what the value so by doing like that so in, in other words here is uh, a scope you put what you should be able to be dropped down here okay that will be dropped down here and in case someone implements that he clicks on that it will be able to do what to implement this particular condition that will have implemented here let's say for example um you want uh, houses, uh, rooms that has with photos. So you can just simply add here another scope and then you say with photos, okay? With, so you can just simply come here and say uh, rooms with photos only, something like that, okay? So how, how can you do that? Now you put here your condition, okay? You put here the condition. So you can just simply come here and say uh, where this is not where date this is going to be where uh, room or for example where photos where photo uh, for example and then you say uh, I put here uh, not and then you put here comma for example now so here when someone say one the rooms who has photos so it will come and implement this square condition and then it will do that uh, where the photos are not none. So that's how it is. So here with scope, if I come here and drop down here, I'll see rooms with photos. So when I click there, it will run that condition and bring rooms which don't have what? I mean, which have at least uh, somewhat, some photos. So if uh, a certain room does not have a photo object in its field, it has none, that will be what? It will be skipped, okay? So that's what we call a filter with what? With scope. You can write your own scope, you can write your own condition. For example, let me show you here. We said uh, with scope of address, and then here we say where address is not equal to null. And by the way, you can even implement this one like this, okay? Where address is equal to null, it will also be what? It will also not, uh, I mean, it will also uh, avoid those rooms address. So uh, that, that at least have some what? Some address. So this one is when you're using a what? Uh, relationship. So you can as well, for example, scope and then say which rooms that are, uh, that have been deleted and then you just only bring here, only trashed and to show you uh, the rooms that have been deleted only. I mean, for example, the buildings that have been deleted only. So likewise, so here you can create your own scope. You can be creative and just create your own condition. And once you can create those, those on your own condition and then you give it a name 
and then a, a unique value and then your attached name filter so that unit condition will be executed when uh, someone will click on that particular uh, scope value uh -huh. so filter type um, so currently supported by the following for example these are the types that of filter that are being supported right now you just simply put equal so when you say equal it will look for any value that has this column and the label so if one say maybe to filter by specific uh, let's say that you want to filter by maybe by id so business id is always unique so if you want to do that you can just simply come and say uh, I just simply put here equal equal like this and then I put here maybe ID and then say maybe ID so what will happen here it will ask the user to type in their ID and it will only bring the results which have those ID that will have done what that will have uh, entered for example you can uh, for example if you come here and put maybe uh, one and you put one so it will only search something that has id of one so that is the meaning of what of equal whereby this is like so the like will look for something which has part of that string that you have specified here so the first one is a column the second one is the uh, the label that you want to display and then this one is what the value that I mean the, 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 the operation that you want. So you have equal, you have not equal. So if you want to display for someone who you can filter by things that are not equal, you can use this one. So you have the like. So this like uh, is the one that does what? That uh, looks uh, for the value which has something in the middle of it. Uh -huh. So this I like. I like it is the one that will uh, implement things with the specific what with the specific values that look like that so that is that i like with the with the with the with the uh, with the case inclusivity the sensitivity then you have contains uh -huh, equal to like so this one is also like like okay this one of contain is also like like a filter then you have uh, start with so this one will filter a value that starts with a particular thing that someone will enter and then ends with it will bring a value that has something that someone will be able to do us to enter then greater than uh, so this greater than they are used to compare in terms of uh, inputs for example you want to see something that is maybe where i is greater than something so you can just simply put here and uh, say uh, you can give here the example you can say where id id is greater than what uh -huh. so this gt it will be able to do what to filter for things where you're saying id is greater than something so green gt means uh is an abbreviation of greater than so if i do like this You'll see, I'll be able to do us to see uh, here the greater than icon. Okay, I mean the greater than example. So if I say like this, I'll be able to put here a value. And if we put the value, it will look for something whose ID is greater than what I would have done, what I would have specified. So that is what we call GT. So you have LOT less than. So you use less than to enable, to enable the user to filter a value that is less than what they will specify. Then we have between, so between, it is straightforward, it is helps you to filter between specific values. For example, we must use, a, we would usually use between when you're filtering part, when you're filtering the dates. So if you want to see, for example, the room that, I mean the building that are collected, that we are collected between specific dates, you can use this between to do what? To achieve that. So I can say maybe, uh, where, you say, Uh, created underscore art and then you see, you see between 
and then say created at and then I put here uh, let's say maybe filter by date something like this so if I do like this a user will be given ability to filter by specific dates let me first reset here So you'll see someone be able to uh, to filter between, for example, this day and another day. So that is the between for you. It can enable you to filter by the dates ranges, okay, of the file that you'll have specified, or the column that you have done specified. So that is uh, between. So here we have between for time. This one will also work for the what? For the time. While this one is for the date. So we have in, so in it will enable us to, or a user to do what, to, to select multiple uh, columns and uh, be able to, uh, to, to, to select, I mean to, to receive the values that are in that particular word, uh, those columns that will have selected. And then we have where not in, uh, which is the opposite of the other one. Then we have the date, this one will someone will be able to filter by the specific date, okay? Then you have filter by the day, someone will be able to filter by the day. You can try these things by your own as you're understanding them. So filter by month, you can as well filter by month if you didn't know. And then we have also filter by year, or you can filter by specific year. So we have the where. Uh -huh. So you can uh, use where, build more complex query filters. So if you want to use that like a uh, building the co complex query, query filters, you can even use this where, okay? So you put a uh, where and then you put here the text that you want to display. And then you, when someone submits, you can collect their out, out inputs and uh, use this where to modify what the user, what you want the user to do what, to see, okay? So you just simply write filter where and then you put here function and then you say query because uh, this could be under here, you say query and then you say where and then you specify for example the title etc and then you can attach multiple so this one will uniquely do what will uniquely appear in a system where as a customer as a custom filter so you can try it out this like this and then for example I can put here name uh, details okay so if I come and refresh I should be able to see uh, the value here so whatever the user inputs in here I can be able to do it I can be able to uh, make use of it for example I want to design my own filter that if a user puts this one I want to maybe first do something before I display so you can uh, receive your filter here you just redesign it give it a name of what it should show and then you write your own condition of what this filter should exactly do so you can as well make such a custom one, such a custom complex filter. You put here the value, the user will put here the value, and then you run your own filter in uh, that hook. I hope you've understood that. Uh, likewise to this one, whereby you can as well write your own SQL statement, okay? So you see, you put just simply put query and then say row, and then you write your own SQL statement, still it will be able to be filtered or to be able to be used to filter. So you can as well do things of relationship. For example, you want uh, something that is in different table, you can just simply uh, override it and then implement it in that way. And then here we have the different types of, uh, of queries uh, that are supported. The default type in uh, the input is uh, play, uh, set the, to set the, the placeholder, you just simply put V here and then add 
a placeholder. So when you add a placeholder, it will be able to appear on that particular filter in the background. Okay, so you can use this one. So for other, uh, if you want to do it to, to maybe limit or validate the, 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 the filters, for example, you can simply add these ones on your uh, filters. For example, you say this is an, a URL, it will be able to do for URL only. If you say this is an email, it will only accept email. If you say this is an integer, it will not accept integer. If you say this is an API, it will only accept AP, P, I mean AIPs. And if you say this is ma, uh, Mac, I don't know. <laughs> and then mobile, I think I know it is, uh, it will make sure it is a what? It is a phone number. So, Mac, I think it's Mac address, okay? Then uh, you can as well limit it to a decimal, you can limit it to a currency, you can limit to a percentage, you can limit to what? To a specific pattern that you can draw using that mask. So that is uh, what, uh, that is what uh, we have looked at and I hope you can really uh, try these things out and understand them. Okay, so that is uh, filters for you. Then uh, we have, uh, a place where you may need uh, a user to do what to select the values okay so if you want the user to be able to select the value what you do um, you use uh, the the filter and then specify the column and then put the what what is you want the user to see as a drop down for example if I want maybe my users to see uh, how should I say it? Okay, to see something from a certain drop down, just like the way you all have drop down. For example, you want to see maybe uh, male and female, something like that, because just here you don't have it. But uh, you want to provide an option of a male and a female. So, what you do here, you create a column and then you attach to it. I mean, you create a filter and then you say equal and I'll put you any sign of your, of, your, of your interest and then you put here uh, the columns and then you say the column that you're going to search from and then you simply say select so when you say select you put the key and the value so once you do that you can leave uh, the rest for the computer it will be able to do what to filter them for you the use of what of keys and values as you can see that so uh, that is the equal for example so sometimes uh users are so many so you may need even to do what to implement uh, uh ajax uh so that when the user is trying to search the system is faster if the users are do what assume are so many on the system or if you have so many records instead of uh, manually searching for each it makes the system slower so you can as well use the word uh, the column itself, uh, for example, for equal, then you specify the, the end point where these animals should come from. So, where the animals are coming from. Uh, that is a select. You can put in there anything to do that. Uh, 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 to select okay different items so then you come to multiple styling here we say that uh, you can as well do it you can as well implement the multiple way but uh, me I already have the love that me and uh, I've not reached that level of uh, uh, on the and plating post areas uh, because uh, I've not reached there so have multiple select so this one will be able to do it to perform multiple selection. Then we have this uh, for performing multiple remote uh, values that are not in the what? In the load. So you have uh, the common scenarios in the select of options. So one is equal to all, two is equal to an archived, and then one is equal to do what? That, and then one equals to, uh, to, to release. So by doing like this, a uh, person, I mean, uh, uh, a filter, I mean, a user will be able to see this one in fact in their filter section as a what? As a radio. Remember, it is slightly different from the other one. It is not exactly the same. 
Here we first put the equal sign or the action that should be done, whether it is square in, whether it is a, a condition, or whether it is a what, and then you later put the what, uh, the values that. Uh, That are meant for it and then we can also as well use uh, the checkpoints like this i mean so we can as well use the check boxes like this in case you want to use user to that uh to filter by use of check boys check boys check boxes uh-huh so here there are some special filters for date and time okay so one of the filter is date and time so this one will able will enable the user to filter by data and time. Then we have another one called um, the date. This one only so enable to filter the date only. Another one is called time. It will also enable to filter the time and also get the day, also get the month, etc. So that is uh, one of the functions that we have here uh, that makes your uh, life easy. So you can as well build uh, complex queries uh, like uh, this one. You get it so you can as well uh, do this kind of work of complex uh, logic uh -huh. so now we come to the what to the main uh -huh. multi column what multi column layout so if you want to separate your filters into two you can as well uh, do that by just simply saying filter and then you put this first separation and then you create the second one by putting uh, uh, the second cooperation. So by doing like this, uh, the what the, the, the space will be created or in case the, the, the office table, I mean, for example, in case the, in case, uh, in case you want to organize the data and uh, maybe the data the tables are so big for example the filters you can as well divide them there like this and these are different different they what the bootstrap classes something like that uh -huh. so you can as well filter by group for example you can attach your group together and then you put there the values that they must put in order to filter for them for example i can just simply come here and copy this and come and paste it uh, here and then i put here for, uh, sorry to be said okay and then i put here any of them that i want for example the name it should be the name in the column or it has say maybe created that and then after I put uh, GT for greater than, and then I say LT for less than, etc. Like that, it is here. So if I do like this and come and refresh, so you can see I'm able to see these groups. Can you see? The groups are there and this one should be at least numeric for it to work properly so i can see the one which is less than that the one which is greater than that the one which is having and uh, not less than this so you can just simply select it and then you put the value it will be able to get for you uh, the building which have less than one what less than one Same here, the argument must be given. Okay, I think let's first reset it. So you see, uh, here you can do it, you can uh, modify and see exactly what you want. So you proceed and you hope you can see that okay you just simply put here the name of the column and then you give it what uh drop downs option that people should what should see so proceed 
where the listener have seen how it is done. So literally, that's how uh, the filter uh, works. So you have column filters. These are very simple. Where you can filter from the column. For example, if you want to filter from the column, uh, you just simply say filter. Okay. So if you say filter, it will do the logic of what of it of uh, of. Uh, of filtering the value that you want to filter, okay? So, and another thing that I want to show you is this one. Uh, so, uh, you can as well implement this one directly on the what on the column itself. For example, I can come here on ID. Come on, refresh. That did work, okay. So assume that uh, you need to filter by specific status of an item. You just simply put uh, like this, you just simply put filter and then you put the values that must be what must be satisfied there okay so it can even be an associative array where that has the value and the response in it okay so uh you'll be able to do what uh, to achieve that so filter in line uh, let me try to show you because i don't have a good example here to show you but i can just simply say filter and then for example if i want to see uh mail and which are active or not active, I can just simply do like this. So by doing like this, okay, so if I do like this and come and refresh, you're going to see refresh. So you're going to see this icon so that is the inline filter or the column filter. I can filter from there. So if I want active ones, I click on active ones and this side. But this is now we do not implement those active and non-active. We cannot be able to do that to achieve that. But in case for the feature idea, you want to make it another uh, way of how to filter for the client, you can just simply give them this uh, filter by what? By specific name without uh, too much hassle. Yeah, so that's it for the filters. So I recommend you to come and uh, play with them in your free time. So you can do what? So you can uh, understand them and start making use of them. So in a filter, we are going to look at uh, the inline filter, how you can edit things in the same line in the table without uh, changing the table. So that's what we'll look at in the what? the next class and i hope you will not miss and i hope you will not uh, give up so in the next class we'll take it from there we're going to look at uh, what we'll look at the inline editing but for now we'll start from here because our time has really gone so in the next class we'll just stop exactly i mean we'll just start from exactly where i've stopped uh, so uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel and then also enable that notification bell so when you post you get notified and then like the video if it really helps you. And uh, goodbye and see you in the next video.